Lawyers and members of the public are here in this courtroom for the hearing of a suit filed by the central bank governor, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, challenging his right to contest the position of Nigeria's president in the 2023 election. Arguing an expert motion filed because of the urgency of the matter, counsel to the CBN governor, Michael Zekome, says his client, who is the current CBN governor, is interested in running for the office of the president of the country but is in a dilemma on account of if he can run without resigning as a governor of the Apex Bank. Mr. Ozekome argues that Section 82, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act has been voided by a federal high court in Umwaya and that the matter is on appeal at the moment. He also praised the court for an order of interim injunction stopping further action on the matter. Our argument in this court is that even that Section 84, Subsection 12, even if it was not struck down, or even if the judgment of Justice Anyadike is not affirmed by the Court of Appeal, it does not apply to Emeshele as governor of Central Bank. Who is he? He's a public officer. What provisions govern public officers? Section 318 of the Constitution defines who a public officer is. Is statutory corporation that is government owned, like the CBN. It's a public um, uh, office. Uh, so a person occupying it is a public officer. Can he therefore be subjected to Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act, which names political appointees as ineligible to contest? We are saying he's not a political appointee. The CBN governor had taken the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the Attorney General of the Federation before a federal high court in Abuja, seeking enforcement of his right to contest the 2023 presidential election without resigning from his current position. Hitherto, when we talk about the 2023 elections, when we look at the Constitution as amended of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Electoral Act, the 2022 version, well, we see now that there are other laws and legal paraphernalia that will be coming to play depending on who is vying for office. That and a number of other issues we will raise with Mr. Ebolu Adiburua, Senior Advocate of Nigeria and Human Rights Lawyer this morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, you put out that statement and said that um, this is a joke. It's a hundred million naira joke. And I, don't you think it's too expensive? Thank you very much, Ayo. Good morning, Nigeria. I seek your kind permission to just... Uh, uh, grant me leave to uh, restate the need for the federal government of Nigeria to resolve the ASU strike. Uh, you see, students are potent. Students are vibrant. And they are the leaders of Nigeria. It's important that the mass action being declared by NAMS should be supported by the people of Nigeria. And you know, answering your question about whether you will be hijacked by hoodlums, the hoodlums are the creations of society, that's the creation of government that refuses to take care of them. The hoodlums are in Abuja. They are always there to invade primaries and uh, meetings of politicians, but because policemen are deployed. So I'm putting the Inspector General of Police uh, on alert to ensure that he provides adequate security for the students in all their locations. Uh, so that their mass protests will be peaceful, will not be hijacked. It is the responsibility of the police under the Police Act to offer them protection. Uh, and, and we think that that is important, that uh, uh, it should be resolved in that manner. So I'm sorry, I just thought that I, I should raise that because it's important to the future of Nigeria, you know. Now, uh, talking about uh, the governor of Central Bank, uh, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, uh, honestly, it's a comedy. We thought that it was something like a joke. We thought it was, it was just something uh, that would remain in the uh, rumor mills uh, because, you know, it's something that had been on for some time. 
when we saw vehicles that were branded with his posters and photographs. And uh, of course, there was a serial denier. But if you trace the history of the uh, uh, governor of Central Bank, you will see that it would be clear that he, the handwriting had been so much on the wall that he was all, all the while a politician and in, indeed a partisan politician. You will recall, Ayo, that in the course of the NSAS protests, the Central Bank governor organized a secret meeting with the leaders of the protesters to try to convince them to shelve the protests. And when they refused to do that, he went ahead to block their accounts. If you recall, the leaders of the NSAS protest, their accounts were blocked by the central bank. And when there was outrage, he actually went to court to secure an ex party order to block their accounts until Mr. Femi Fallon or SN, another lawyer, had to rise to, rise to the occasion uh, to put an end to that uh, 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 the, the device. So all the while, the, the governor of Central Bank had uh, given us the impression that he, he, he is not entitled to remain in that office. And I say this with all due respect to him, uh, because you know we, Nigerians have trusted so much uh, in, in the person of the governor. You know, he's the number one banker in Nigeria. He's the chairman of the uh, Bankers Committee. He's the chairman of the financial regulation uh, 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 entities in Nigeria that determines the uh, uh, rate of inflation, that determines the exchange rate. The, the central, the uh, uh, governor of the central bank. Is such in, in a position of fiduciary relationship to so many people. And it's not correct for such a person to openly indicate partisan interests. Can you imagine, for instance, Ayo, that the governor of Central Bank is a member of all progressive Congress, and he has power to remove managing directors of all banks. He has power to dissolve the executive of all banks. He has power to appoint any other person in their place, as he did with Central Bank recently. So you imagine, for instance, if Mr. Mifile is a member of APC, and the governor of another bank is a member of PDP, and he's going to abuse his position or use his position to punish him, to wish on him. So that is the reason why he is not in a position to pursue partisan politics. For instance, Mr. Mifile is the lender to all, all other banks. He is the, he's in custody of the foreign exchange is in custody of, of, of our international accounts. How can such a person submit himself to politicians? Well, How can Mr. such a person submit himself to APC? Well, Mr. Mr. De Gourua, uh, there, there are those who would make it clear that as far as the laws are concerned, he hasn't done anything wrong, or has he? Oh, yes, he has done a lot wrong. Because you shouldn't judge the position of Mr. Mefile with the Constitution alone. There are laws regulating his office specifically. So those laws should be rated above and primarily in relation to his employment. Number one is that the CBN Act is the one that governs the activities of the central bank governor. Section one of the CBN Act says that that office should be autonomous. It should be dependent. The central bank of Nigeria, for God's sake, is like INEC. It should not be under the control of politicians. It should not be under the control of the presidency. It should not be under the control of APC or PDP or APCA. Section 6 of the CBN Act says the governor of Central Bank should not pursue any interest that will make him to be in conflict with his official duties. How can the governor of Central Bank go and indicate interest to pick up nomination form in a political party and he still wants to remain in office? There is conflict of interest. For instance, Ayo, since yesterday, when this matter became known to the public, it has caused a lot of commotion in INEC because the central bank is warehousing sensitive materials for INEC. Unknown to the INEC that the head of that agency is a member of APC. How can the governor of central bank who wants to be a presidential candidate of a political party be in charge of uh, electoral materials, in charge of ballot box, but, in charge of uh, 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 card reader? Well, Mr. Adeguruwa, there are those who would also wonder, hey, is the case in court enough proof that uh, the CBN governor has declared interest in the presidential elections? Because he just recently said, look, I'm still consulting with all the higher powers and all of that. So there hasn't been that 
outright, you know, uh, affirmation that yes. And that's also what uh, INEC put out. You, you must have seen the statement from INEC saying, well, to the best of our knowledge, that isn't the case yet. But when that time, if and when that time comes, then the needful shall be done. Yeah, thank you, Ayo. It is scandalous enough, as far as Nigerians are concerned, that there is a confirmation from the world in Delta State that Mr. Godio Emefele is indeed a card carrying member of the All Progressive Congress. That is enough conflict. Whether he indicates his interest specifically to pick nomination form, since the news broke out, he has not denied that he's a card carrying member of a political party. That is enough for him to leave office. That is enough for him to vacate office. The case that he has filed at the Federal High Court, with all due respect, is mainly meant to pull the wool over Nigerians. Because what Mr. Godwin Emifile is doing with the case in the Federal High Court is to seek to secure his position in office. He's asking the court to order that status quo be maintained. In other words, he doesn't want to be sacked because he knew that Nigerians were going to be outraged, which is stepping into the murky waters of politics. Why is pretending to be regulating our financial sector. That's why he filed that case. It's not for interpretation of Section 82, uh, uh, Section 82 uh, uh, at all. What he's doing uh, strategically is to use that case to tie the hands of the president and the Senate from asking him to leave office. And he should do that in the National Industrial Court. If he wants to protect his position in office, he should go there to determine his status, not the Federal High Court. So the case that he filed at the Federal High Court has nothing to do with his eligibility. He's indirectly using it with style to tie the hands of Nigerians from asking him to leave office. And that's why we are demanding, for instance, that political parties, INEC, uh, National Assembly, Civil Society Organization, SERAP, Nigerian Bar Association, everybody should go and join that case and kill it. Because this is a bad example to other public officers. Because if we say, for instance, the governor of Central Bank should sit in office and still pick a nomination form for a political party. That should extend to INEC chairman. The chairman of INEC should also go and pick the form of PDP because he's a public officer. The chief justice of Nigeria should go and pick the nomination form of ABGA because he's also a public officer. For God's sake, Mr. Mifele is occupying a sensitive position. And by section one of the public... Oh, Mr. Ade Gorua, yeah, he's uh, tickling our imagination even as he's provoking uh, food for thought. We hope to get him back as soon as possible because it will now be time to begin to look at the legal gymnastics to specifically ask, you know, based on what um, um, Mr. Mifile's law, lawyers are saying that um, Section 84, subsection 12 does not apply to him because... He is not a political appointee, specifically that he is a public servant. So in the light of that, is it that um, the law has typically not anticipated this particular uh, situation or um, the law uh, or, or, or his lawyers are, are right in their argument, so to speak? Well, there are those who, I mean, uh, I, I also glanced at the front page of uh, was it the, uh, one of the dailies yesterday. Uh, saying that, you know, they, there's an uproar in the fina among finance experts and lawyers uh, concerning that information that is, should I say, leaking <laughs> or smoking out right now. So one, one can only wait and just, uh, you know, wonder how this is all going to play out. Well, we'll wait for uh, Mr. Oboluari Burua to, to speak to it because, you know, he is a senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, Mr. Ozekume, Chief Ozekume, who spoke with us earlier, you know, on on screen, talking about uh, the the Constitution, the Electoral Act, um, uh, also has his own case. So ultimately, it looks like it's going to be a case between lawyers <laughs> and, and lawyers uh, and lawyers and more lawyers. And but where because when when you, when you look at that, you also have to look at the Attorney General of the Federation, hmm. who had said based on the ruling from. Abia State, uh, the deletion 
of that uh, aspect of the law is in progress. So we're waiting for that to be deleted mm. from the Electoral Act. Mr. Ebonlu Adegorua is back, and uh, I hope you heard us while we were, you know, exchanging ideas, thoughts on the legal gymnastics of um, um, uh, Mr. Emefiele's petition to the court. I want to want you to speak to the position of the Mafia's lawyers who say that uh, Section 84, Subsection 12, does not apply to him. Thank you very much. When you want to interpret the law, it must be interpreted holistically. And Section 84, Sub 12, of the Constitution, of the Electoral Act, rather, I'm sorry, was meant to avoid a position whereby somebody who has an interest in elective office and yet occupies public office does not put himself in position of conflict. Let me agree with the counsel to Mr. Godwin Emefkele that indeed he's a public officer. Paragraph one of the Code of Conduct guiding the activities of public officers says that no public officer should put himself in any position where there will be conflict between his official duties and his personal interests. And you can see the kind of crisis that Mr. Emefili has thrown the Nigerian economy into. Since the period he indicated this in, uh, interest in uh, partisan politics, the Naira has plummeted. The exchange rate yesterday is 591 Naira to $1, whereas it was 470 Naira before. So it, 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 it is creating a lot of crisis in the economy. Mr. Mefele is not an ordinary public officer. He's the number one banker in Nigeria, like I've told you. So he's guided by not just the Electoral Act, not just the Constitution. He's guided by the banks and other financial activities, uh, 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 financial activities Act. He's guided by the Central Bank of Nigeria Act. And he cannot, while holding office as the number one banker of Nigeria, pick a nomination form of a political party. It, okay. It's a joke, and we can't allow it. Now, I, I want to follow up on that by asking, at what point does INEC come in here? Because we're not really sure if he's contesting or not. As my colleague said, you know, only days ago he said he's still consulting with God, and he's the one that headed to court, asking the court to restrain INEC from stopping him uh, from pursuing his presidential ambition. So at what point did INEC in the very recent past stop him from pursuing his ambition? Please give us some legal clarity on that. In fact, you yourself uh, have, give, have given a clarity on that. Because in law, there must be a cause of action. There must be something that the defendants have done which will activate the case you are filing in court. As we speak this morning, there is no action on the part of INEC. There is no action on the part of the Attorney General of the Federation indicating their decision or desire to prevent Mr. Emefile from contesting office. So we shows clearly that the case he has filed in court discloses no reasonable cause of action. The matter is premature. It is frivolous. And I'm glad that the judge handling the case has seen through it. That's why he declined to make any order. And I'm sure he will not make any order to cause crisis in the economy of Nigeria, to ask somebody who is regulating our financial sector to at the same time go and bow to Mr. Uh, to Senator Adamu as chairman of INEC, to go and bow to uh, Senator Yola Missouri as secretary of uh, uh, APC. That shouldn't happen. So as we are today, this morning, there is no cause of action for Mr. Mefili. As indeed, before the court, he has not even declared his intention to contest office. So there is no reason for him to be in court at all. But like I told you earlier, the game plan of Mr. Godwin Emefele is to use this case to tie the hands of the president and the National Assembly from sacking him so that he will continue to remain in office and he will continue to contend that there is a case pending in court. That's why he was asking the court to ask that the status quo be maintained. That status quo is to ask him to sit in office while what? he goes ahead to be meeting with politicians. And that just, shouldn't just, work. Just, just a quick one on this one before we go to a, one or two other matters. So the court has invited INEC and the AGF uh, to make some declarations, at least to, I mean, you saw the judgment and all of that. So one is wondering, 
what do you make of that um, position of the court as at this moment? And what would you be, what, can you hazard a guess as to what the AGF's office or the INEC might be uh, presenting to the court? Yes, I can hazard a guess, Ayo. By the extant practice of our law as we stand in Nigeria today, the Supreme Court has given decisions asking INEC to remain neutral in political matters. So I can tell you for sure, as I speak to you this morning, that INEC will not file any paper in that court case. That is the reason why may feel a deliberately swing, knowing the position of the law that the Supreme Court has asked INEC to remain neutral in electoral matters. And then you can also predict the position of the Honorable Attorney General. The Honorable Attorney General is in support of the cancellation of Section 80, 82, uh, 8412. So the Honorable Attorney General is going to support Mr. Mayfield the, the matter in a in, in federal high court. Uh, where this same section 8412 was nullified. The attorney general in that case supported the plaintiff and was even rejoicing. The office of the attorney general was rejoicing for a judgment that was against it. So you can predict where the attorney general will go. And indeed, you know that the attorney general has already also declared to contest office as governor of Tebi State. So the attorney general will probably also support the position of Mr. Gordon Emefile for him to also remain in office while he also picks the nomination form of governorship for KB State. So I okay. think what is important, that's why I'm asking that other persons and parties should go into the case. If you want to pick the nomination form of APC, APC itself should be a party to the case. Hmm. Okay, well, National uh, Assembly should be a party to the case. Let the, everybody the, the go and join that the, case. Yeah, um, well, you, you maybe I could just quickly correct something that I, you, you said the other time. I think you meant to say Senator Adamo is chairman of APC and not INEC, as you, as you <laughs> came up the much. other time. But don't you think, because, I mean, INEC has, over time, any time that we're in the build-up to an election, there are always cases into which INEC is joined. Don't you think that these legal battles that INEC has to contend with are sufficient distractions for the electoral umpire? I think we have... A... Can you hear me? Uh, thank you. Th yes, I can hear you. You are talking okay. about whether the cases uh, that uh, INEC is being confronted with would create some kind of distraction. Uh, for that agency in, in yes. the execution of, yeah. yes, I know. we are in a democratic society. If you go through the budget of INEC year in, year out, a lot of money is dedicated for litigation. And the reason is because every time we have a new electoral act, there has to be interpretation. There has to be some form of clarification by the judiciary, which is entitled under the constitution to be the one to give such interpretation. So we should not be scared of cases. The only thing for us is that those cases should be determined timelessly. I don't see the reason why the case of Section 8412 should still be pending in court by now, because it's affecting a lot of things. It's creating a lot of instability. It's creating a lot of tension. The Court of Appeal should have determined that case from day to day and immediately get to the Supreme Court, and that section be resolved permanently. Otherwise, Emefile will not be doing this kind of comedy that he is up to presently if the matter had been determined one way or the other. So we shouldn't be worried that there are cases pending against INEC. INEC has enough materials. It's been well-funded to have enough personnel. It has a legal department manned by capable senior advocates, uh, whom I have worked with in a number of cases. And so they have a robust legal department that will handle those matters. So it shouldn't be an excuse for INEC, for instance, to continue to conduct inconclusive elections or be claiming that the cases in court is a distraction. It cannot affect the activities of INEC because enough fund has been budgeted to take care of those cases. And there are enough lawyers in Nigeria uh, for INEC to be able to uh, hire so that it will not distract itself from the main uh, responsibility of organizing elections. Mm. Let's look a bit more at um, section 84, subsection 12. There are other political appointees now who are contesting and apparently running foul of uh, that section of the new Electoral Act. Um, are they at rest 
because of the ruling of the Abia State um, High Court. And while it has not been deleted, what is the implication of their uh, for their continued pursuit of their presidential aspiration? They are all working on landmines. They are working on legal landmines. Political parties fielding public officers as candidates are taking a huge risk. And they should not do that. Because you know what happened in Zamfara State. You know what happened in River State. Once a matter is pending in court, it, is, it should be sufficient notice to anybody not to take any risk. So those who are uh, uh, jostling for public office through elections, and yet are holding appointed, uh, appointing offices, are only risking their positions, and they are putting their political parties at risk. So I would not advise any political party, for instance, to field any public officer who is still in office and has not resigned, and yet wants to also contest an election. Because the purpose is so clear. If, for instance, you are a central bank governor, and we are paying you so much, you have a private debt, you have all manner of things at your beck and call, and you are not satisfied with that uh, office. You are not satisfied, you are not contented with the office we have given you, where you have spent five years, and another five years was renewed for you, and you are not happy with that, you are not contented. You cannot, while remaining there, then be seeking elective office. That's the purpose. It is rational, it is logical, it is moral, that whoever is not satisfied with office that is uh, occupying, and wants to go for election, should leave that office. Otherwise, if you are satisfied, why, would you, why, why, why won't you remain in the place and discharge your responsibilities effectively? But once you are not contented, once there is greed in your eye, once you are politically so avaricious to go to uh, uh, the politicians, you should vacate your office. You should it's, vacate it's, your office. It's a bit more expansive than that. Because um, by that aspect of the Electoral Act, local government chairmen, governors and their deputies, national assembly members are voting delegates. And very soon we'll see um, a very um, practically empty national assembly where they return to their states to begin to ca campaign and contest for election. So what's going to happen? Are we going to see mass resignations in view of Section 84, Subsection 12? Or are we going to see a mass uh, flouting of that aspect of the law. Thank you so very much. Nigeria has close to 200 million people. Those who are already occupying public office, they are already discharging their functions and serving Nigeria in one capacity. They should give others a chance. You can't hold us to ransom. We recycle the same people up and down every day. I, I, I think with all due respect, those who have already served Nigeria in one capacity or the other should be satisfied with the opportunities that we are giving them. They should allow other people. We don't need to panic over Section 8412. They should well, allow other people. It sounds like, uh, Mr. Ebolu Alugura, you are campaigning for turn by turn. <laughs> but, no, I understand. I, 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 I just, just... Think, look, at, look at the last PR role. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just I just wanted to 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 chip that in. Well, we have to thank you very much this morning. Uh, we know you have quite a, a loaded day. Ebolu Adigburuwa is senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much for your perspectives this morning, and thank you for the love thank of country. Thank you, my pleasure.